Hello, I've come back to the making the panels for the big Moog modular. Now, I kind of messed up on the previous video, but I'm glad I had a go. Uh, you don't know if you don't try. So what I've done, a few people wrote in the comments, why don't you just buy the aluminium already anodized? And I kind of thought, well, that defeats the object of making a YouTube video trying to show people how to do something themselves, some sort of DIY. Uh, it will be pointless if you're buying it already made. But in all fairness, I thought, well, I'll have a go uh, just to see what it looks like. So I bought some aluminium panels and these are already anodized. They're anodized underneath the plastic layer. When they turned up, I kind of looked at this and I thought, oh, that looks a bit rubbish, doesn't it? And then I realized, actually, that's the back. Nothing to worry about. The black is underneath this layer and they put that plastic layer on obviously because you might scratch it whilst you're doing your drilling holes and whatever. So by the way I must say thank you to all my patrons. Uh, these cost about £27 for three of these so they, they weren't cheap uh, but thank you to all my Patreon people because all, all the money that goes in there, I do 100% spend it only on things for future videos. So thanks to you guys very much. Right, moving on. Uh, so I've decided this one is rubbish because it's too long. It overhangs where some of the panels need to be underneath. You see all the panels sort of line up on the System 55. And if I put this in, it sort of overhangs by a centimetre, so everything's got to move along a bit. And then they're not in line. And that really hurts my OCD. And uh, I kind of don't like that. So I'm going to remake this with a ready-made anodized aluminium panel. This is the design that I've worked out. There's sort of wood behind this piece of the area here. And then you've got to add the bit on for the folds. And another suggestion in the comments was why not put a MIDI in an out port? Then I can connect to the back of any 19 inch rack unit that I decide to put in there. Brilliant. Thanks. That's where the comments are useful. I appreciate it. So I've kind of redesigned uh, enough space for all these jack sockets so that there'll be one set of ins and outs left and right for each of the four 19 inch rack units. And then there's a, a little gap at the bottom, which is just enough for two of these, MIDI in, MIDI out. So that will daisy chain along the back of the 19 inch rack units. So hopefully this little design might work out. I've done a, a bit of scribbling and things and it, it kind of looks okay. Uh, and I copied it, reprinted it back out and to save you the boredom of watching all this, I've stuck it onto one of these panels. There you go. So that's all kind of lined up now. And then I've used the automatic center punch and I kind of uh, hit inside the X everywhere. So now if I take this layer off, hopefully, I think I punched them all, I should have uh, a mock to drill. So I'm going to drill all those. I'm going to get back to actually anodizing some panels myself again. I think in the video the acid was far too weak because if you look carefully I think I put about 30% acid and 70% uh, deionized water in the container for the sulfuric acid and then I realized uh, after watching that, I looked on the bottle and it's only 39% uh, sulfuric acid anyway. So then you divide that by 30% again and it's pretty weak. So I've ordered some more acid and I'm going to redo it and make a much stronger mixture next time because I think that's probably where I went wrong. This, like I say, this is an expensive way of doing it. So this one piece basically cost £9. And that is why I want to make them myself.
So this is what I've been using to bend the aluminium panels, these little bits along here. And you basically put that in there and pull down the lever and this brings up the bottom and puts a bend into it. Uh, but getting that correct all the time is really, really difficult. And working out just how much extra aluminium you need on a panel before you bend that piece, well, that's uh, just mad science and I haven't quite got my head around it. But what I have done now is I've put a piece of wood along the back there to try and make so that every piece of metal that I put in there, I can only put it in so far. So hopefully every bend should turn out about the same. I don't even know if I've got that in the right place. But here goes. That goes in there. And then all you do is hold it in and it will capture it. And then with any look, because it's so bloody strong this is, there she goes. And Oh, I think I may have just made enough space there to get. Ah, oh, yes, I can get the jack in. Brilliant, right. I'll get this off the desk and I'll peel all this off and we'll see what it looks like and then I'll mark it, mark it up with the laser. So this is the laser and this is called a fibre laser. So what happens is the blue box over there is the main sort of laser, the power, and you have an optic fibre on the yellow cable and that comes into this device here. And inside this head you have uh, two galvanometers, two mirrors that move very, very quickly. And what happens is the laser switches on and off, the mirrors move and that points the laser to where you want to mark on the metal. Uh, there's also another box there that's to do with the power supply. There's a couple of boxes up there. It's a bit mishmash, but it works fine. Uh, I'll just zoom in and I'll show you how the lettering works. It's very quick. Okay, I have one more panel that I made that didn't turn out too well, but I'm going to make use of it anyway. Now, this is probably the simplest panel on the Moog, and it's just a multiple. All it is, is all the tips are connected together, and uh, the ground, if you wish to call it, uh, is just connected through the actual metal panel. So that's the simplest piece that you can make for a synthesizer. However, that's too simple. The next simplest piece is called an attenuator. And what this does is you 
attenuate a signal, uh, mainly a control voltage. So you can plug in a control voltage source in here and then you can get half of it out of here if you turn that halfway or fully or whatever. You, you have a, a degree of control of the signal that comes out. Now the other clever thing about this is as long as you don't plug in another jack here or here, this will also feed into the next one and the next one. So you can have one control voltage going in and if there's nothing in here you can have three control voltages coming out because the jack sockets uh, switch. When you plug in a jack it normally has some type of switching mechanism in there. So if there's not a jack in there then what happens is the uh, signal going in here will also feed into this one and will feed into this one and it's only broken by plugging in another jack uh, in there and then that will work these two or if you have three control voltage signals going in then they'll all have their own separate sort of control voltage coming out. <laughs> Try and sort of explain that in a way. Uh, so in my little book of bits, yeah, if that makes any sense to you, what happens is if I plug in here and there's nothing in this one, then this switch is connected. So the signal also feeds into the next potentiometer and the next potentiometer, so on and so forth. So what I've done here is I've already pre-drilled and put the components in of that sort of shoddy piece of uh, aluminium that I didn't quite get r uh, right but I don't want to destroy it, I don't want to just throw it away. It doesn't matter, it's only going in my unit anyway. So I've drilled the holes and uh, put in the components to sort of copy this. The only difference is I put four in instead of three. Uh, I've used smaller sort of uh, potentiometers so that I can actually fix four in there. So now if I just quickly make one of these up then I can throw it into the uh, into the Mo modular next to the uh, set of jack ins and outs that I've made to replace this thing and yeah we should be able to see the difference between something good and something bad Okay, saved you from all the boredom of me soldering this together, and there you go, all done. So basically this is, well, it's sort of a copy of this attenuator, only it's got four instead of three, and as you see, each one is linked to the next on the inputs if there's not a jack plugged in. So hopefully that's going to do the same thing as the Moog 995. Right, I'll uh, put these bits back into the synth and switch on and see what happens. So there you have it. Uh, the attenuator is in and uh, I've connected it up randomly to a few of the signal outputs and things. So basically you should only really use this for control voltages. It's not really great for actual audio because this thing has three mixer inputs in anyway, three sets of four. So I'll use those for the audio, and this is just for changing control voltages. Like I say, there's one already on here, but uh, one's never enough when you can have two of them. So that's a three and a four, so that's seven altogether. Yeah, I can play about with things. So the 19-inch rack unit piece is in here, and yes, definitely the uh, anodized aluminium that's made from the factory looks better than mine. Oh, well. I'll have to have another go, never mind. Uh, I've rigged up the midi ins and outs, etc., to the uh, 19 inch rack pieces here, but I'm not controlling them yet. But they do go in to each one of them and then back out again here, so I can use those in the future for something if I want to. But at least now, I've got the left and right ins and outs, and what I've done, I've also doubled them. So if I send an input into this one, instead of making up another cable and going through one of the uh, multiples to get a second signal, I can just come out of the one next to it and back into the one underneath. So it's a kind of a, a multiple built in because each one of these, they're doubled up, these are doubled up. So you should be able to get some sort of 
semi-complex connection going off. So, uh, right, what does it sound like with these attenuators in? Now, you'll have to excuse me, I've only had 10 minutes of throwing plugs in to try and get some sort of rhythm or sound going for you, but I'll just give you a little demo anyway. Let me move this back so you can see what's kind of happening. And turn that down a little bit. All right. Probably about there. Right, uh, okay, so. Not the greatest rhythm, but I've, I've just kind of just set something up to demo what's going off with these attenuators and the, uh, the fact that I can now plug in any of these uh, effects units here. And obviously you can just pull them out and swap them over if I can find some better ones. But they'll do for now, just adds a bit of effect to the sound. So now with the attenuators, uh, I should be able to attenuate some of the signals going around. I had a really nice bassy sound earlier, I seem to have lost it. Ah. Messing about now. Anyhow, this, all these attenuators are all working now, and uh, these, you know, the fact that you can just jack in whatever you want to add up there. I've even put the sort of tuner in up here as well. Uh, yeah, just uh, just adds a little bit more to this. Uh, yes, I know you can just sort of get something like this and add all your outboard gear and effects and things like that, but I kind of just think in the long run by the time I've finished off uh, building all the extra ideas that I might come across along here at least these all line up now uh, and that was by squishing that down a little bit to the right size so that everything now is going to be in line as I build new devices for it so I haven't got a clue what to what to add to this now if you've got any ideas what I should add to this as long as it's not too complex, uh, then please put something down in the comments and I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can build it. I'll try my best anyway. But if you uh, like that video, please give us a thumbs up. And this is an ongoing project, so there'll be another video and another video, etc., so on and so forth. And uh, I'll just see how I can make this thing sound by the time I've added all these new bits to it. So if you like that, please give us a thumbs up and uh, click that little bell thing and then you'll be notified when a new video comes out. All the best. Thanks so much for watching. Bye bye.